finally made it to the soldering. Cut, grind, foil, solder. That's today. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. We've been doing a lot of work on this project of the seed of life. So we started out with the cutting of the glass, broke those into pieces, and then we did some grinding to get those pieces to look much nicer and to fit a lot better. And then we wrapped all those pieces in the copper foil tape, and now we're ready for this huge step in the soldering. I'm gonna try to go over all the details of the soldering step to help those of you who are just getting started and trying to understand this soldering process. Of course, if this is your first time picking up a soldering iron, it's probably gonna be a little bit tough on you today. Um, I think this is the hardest part of the stained glass process. But trust me, it's gonna get much, much better as you do more projects. As always, if you wanna get started, we've got the beginner's kit available. Also, you can buy me a coffee and become a coffee supporter. And thank you all for just being here and joining me. And of course, all the information and everything we talk about today can be found in the description. There's a lot of things to cover and there's a lot of work to do. So let's get back into it and we'll start the soldering. So I get a few questions about this on which surface to work on. This is just a piece of plywood. You can also get something called a homosote board and that is something that's made specifically for soldering. But either way works fine. I had this laying around so that's what we're using. You wanna save some money, use plywood. So let's put these pieces on here. I've got the pattern here we could use to start things off. My lines were a little bit too thick for these pieces. So now that there's a lot of spacing in between um, our piece, and we might have to not follow this pattern. We could build um, basically from the center out. I think first things we need to do is make sure that our pieces are turned the correct side. What's gonna be the top front face or what's gonna be the back? There should be some slight difference in the glass. Let's go with the shiny side. I think I like the black with the texture. These guys I want to go with the shinier. Essentially, I'm not using the pattern because it's not matching. We're just going to eyeball it. It's probably as good as I think it's going to get. Looking for these horseshoe nails that you put around your pieces so they can hold them together while we're soldering. I have no idea where they are, but let's take a look at those drawers and maybe we can find them. Normally, this is the drawer that I would think I'd put some in. We got some pens that might work. A lot of miscellaneous stuff. Things that I don't use, but I think they're all good for lead work. And they should be in here. I just don't know where I put them. Doesn't make sense. Everything is all glass. So these are horseshoe nails, and man, I should clean them. They got really rusted up. So I got this set from a friend who did um, stained glass back, way back in the days, and he found out that I was starting to do stained glass, and so he uh, gave these to me. So basically what you do with this is to put them all around your pieces so they don't move while you're soldering. So let's try it out, and we'll try to use these horseshoe nails. It's probably good with the hammer. You'll see these nails are a little bit special. They have a tapered uh, tip. So when you drive it down into the wood and those pieces, it'll be easier. It makes it easier to take out, but also you can really get in there right on the edge of your 
glass. I think I'm going to use something here as uh, some spacers. These pins should be good for it. I think you should have a little bit of spacing in between the pieces um, so that solder can flow in there in between. So that's what we're going to do is space these out a little bit so we can give that solder a little bit of flow in between those pieces. Overkill, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's overkill. But now the pieces look like they can't move anymore. Now at this point, everything should look exactly like how you want it to turn out uh, with all the pieces exactly where they should be. So we're gonna move on into the soldering. First thing you're gonna need is some flux. I have a jar right there, but what it looks like. Right, so that's an old bottle that I've got. Um, it still works fine. I tend to go with the liquid flux. I think it's been working out for me. Uh, but you can also get this paste type uh, for your flux. And they both work exactly the same, just in the application of it. Either one that you choose um, would be totally fine. I like to just use the brush and make it easier. Um, it applies real nice and easy. Then we have our solder. It's a solid core, 60% tin, 40% lead. I think the melting point is a little bit better than the 50-50, so it's gonna help you out a little bit better. My recommendation is to go with the 60-40 solid core if you're starting out. You can go with the 50-50. I hear that works quite well, but the 60-40 is a lot more common, and that's what we're gonna be using. Then next up is definitely one of my favorite things here. One of my favorite tools. This is a Hakko soldering iron, uh, model number FX601. To me, this is the best soldering iron out there for stained glass. The quality on these and the temperature control is excellent. I don't believe that you can find a soldering iron that's better than this for what we're doing here. So if you can save up for one and you can get one of these, it is highly, highly recommended. So I'm gonna let that heat up for a bit. It's still heating up with that solid light. Once it starts blinking, then it's reached, it has reached its temperature right there. Uh, we've set it to 360. And I think we'll start off with that 360 Celsius. All right, and also this thing here is quite interesting. These are brass coils that you uh, clean your tips with and it works a lot better than a wet sponge. If you can pick up one of these, it's gonna make life much, much easier. Yeah, this tip is probably maybe four millimeters, but you want something wider, it's gonna help you out a lot uh, easier than these pinpoint ones. So if you do pick up an iron, make sure that it is a little bit wider. And finally, something that I always use when I solder um, is this mask. So these filters are removable and replaceable. So once it gets dirty, then you could replace it. So when you solder, you wanna open up your windows and doors uh, to be more ventilated. And this mask definitely helps uh, block those solder fumes. Um, nothing gets through and you can't, you can't smell anything. Um, so I always wear this when I do my solder work. And I like wearing safety glasses um, so I can get up in there and uh, it could protect from the solder splats. And then finally, I like to wear gloves when I solder. Um, some people like heat resistant gloves that could help protect you from the solder, the hot melting solder that could get on your hands. Um, I don't have any problems with that. It doesn't really get on my hands. I just don't like flux on my fingers. It's just really hard to clean off. Also, to not be touching as much solder um, with the lead. So the first thing we need to do is we want to tack everything together, which means to put some solder at each point uh, between the pieces. So now those pieces will be held together. Um, just one little dot so they can all be connected. And once we do that, nothing should move and we can add more solder to it. All right, so we'll bend so we can kind of shape this, let it sit there like that. And now we just need a little bit of flux and we'll add just a dab to the spot that you want to solder. Um, so we'll do it at those two points there. And we'll start off with a clean tip 
and it will melt off a little bit. There's some blob right there on that. And then we're just going to add just a real quick tap. Right there is one. There's another. Okay, so now those two spots have been tacked. Um, so those three pieces are now connected. Let's do a couple more and we'll do a little bit of a um, circle connection right here. There's one right there. Another piece right there. So maybe you saw a spot where I went for um, to tack it, but I didn't add flux, so the solder is not picking up. Um, it's not flowing onto the copper foil, which is fine. Once you add flux to it, it'll start flowing right away. So now these pieces that you see with the solder, those pieces are now connected to each other. And that's what we want to do throughout the rest of these pieces. I want to do that and add a couple more spots um, to all these pieces before we pull out the pins. Then we could freestyle everything and start moving everything around. All right, that's good. So now everything is together. So to continue this, we'll get all the flux on there and then we'll add solder. We'll work on the surface for now. So for the first part of it, just melt the solder and go over all these lines. You want to move at a fairly quick pace and not sitting at one spot for too long. You can crack the glass or most likely the adhesion from the tape will come off. You don't want any of that to happen so just move quickly and you can always come back and correct those lines. We're not trying to get the nice beads right now, you're just adding solder onto the copper foil, trying to cover the base. And now everything is starting to heat up. So we wanna take a little break, let things cool down before we start again. Uh, we're gonna flip this over and do the reverse. And again, just quickly moving along, adding the solder onto the copper foil. You should always have flux on there to help flow that solder. And we're just gonna keep repeating, going from the front and the back, trying to add more solder to get those nice bead lines. And the bead lines are gonna be all about you understanding your soldering iron and the heat um, that's coming off of it and dialing in the speed at which you're moving the iron um, and also the temperature that you have it set at. Lastly, we just gotta add solder all the way around the edge of the piece. At this point, you can add two jump rings and we'll be done with the soldering. But I actually have another idea, uh, which is to do the framing of this piece with some lead cane. But the problem is I haven't done any leaded work before. So I will be taking a class pretty soon and I want to leave this as is and eventually I can come back and add some lead cane to frame this piece. But for now we need to do some cleaning, get rid of the flux. All right, so to clean this, I like to use CJ's flux remover. You can also use soap and water as well. Um, I think CJ's is a little bit better, especially if you're looking to do some patina afterwards. We just need a little bit of it. side and we'll dry everything so this turned out fantastic completely a great project so far um, we're gonna leave this one alone right now like I mentioned we're gonna add some lead came to this to do the framing of the border um, so that's coming up I'm taking a class and it's gonna be all about lead work. Once we do that, then we can add the jump rings and then we can hang that and call it done. So that's my plan for this project. Um, but the next step I wanna get into is to do some patina. I'm thinking we're gonna go with the black patina for this. Um, I think the black lines are gonna really look great. Um, if you guys like this one, give me a thumbs up, hit that like button and be sure to get that kit if you'd like to get started. And thanks again, I'll see you next time and we'll get into the black patina. It's fun.